This is going to be chapters 12 and 13 of the Lemonade War. Chapter 12, Waiting Period. A specified delay required by law between taking an action and seeing the results of that action. Jessie wanted to have fun. She really did. But it seemed like the more she tried, the less she had. First, the drive to the beach with Megan took two and a half hours because of traffic. Jessie felt the car lurching. Forward stop. Forward stop. Memo to myself, said Mr. Moriarty, never go to the beach on the Sunday of Labor Day weekend, especially when there's been a heat wave for more than a week. In the back seat, Jesse and Megan played license plate tag and magnetic bingo and 20 questions. But by the end of the car ride, Jesse was cramped and bored. Then the beach parking lot was full, so they had to park half a mile away and walk. Then the beach was so crowded that they could hardly find a spot for their blanket. Then Megan said the water was too cold and she just wanted to go in up to her ankles. She kept squealing and running backwards every time a gentle ripple of a wave came her way. What fun was that? Sure, the water was cold. It was the North Shore. It was supposed to be cold. That's why it felt so good on a hot day like this. When Jesse and Evan went to the beach, they would boogie board and body surf and skim board and throw a screaming scrunch ball back and forth the whole time. They loved to stay in the water until their lips turned blue and they couldn't stop shaking. Then they'd roast themselves like weenies on their towels until they were hot and sweating again. And then they'd go right back in. Now that was fun at the beach. Megan liked to play sandcastles and collect shells and play sand tennis and read magazines. Well, that's all fine, thought Jessie, but not going in the water, that's crazy. The ride home was itchy and hot. Jessie had sand in all the places where her skin rubbed together, between her toes, behind her ears, and between the cheeks of her bottom. And somehow she'd gotten sunburned on her back, even though Mrs. Moriarty had smeared her all over with thick, goopy sunscreen, sunscreen twice. Jessie didn't even have the patience for 10 questions, let alone 20. But Megan didn't get that Jessie didn't feel like talking. She kept trying to get her to take a quiz in a teen magazine. If Evan had been there, he would have kept quiet or maybe hummed a little. Jessie liked it when Evan hummed. As they turned onto Damon Road, Megan asked, are you feeling sick? In fact, Jessie was. For the past half hour, Jessie had been imagining walking in the door and facing Evan. And she'd been feeling sicker and sicker with every mile that brought her closer to home. Chapter 13, Crisis Management. Crisis management is a special or extraordinary methods and procedures used when a business is in danger of failing. Sucker! Oh man, you were schooled! Preschool baby! For the third time that afternoon, Scott Spencer had gotten the drop on Evan, dribbling around him and then hitting the easy layup. So the guys were giving him the business, even the ones on his own team. It was Evan, Paul, and Ryan against Kevin Toomey, Malik Lewis, and Scott. Evan wished that Scott hadn't shown up, but he had, and they needed the sixth guy for three on three since Jack had gone home to ask his mom if they could all swim at his house. So what was Evan supposed to say? Anyway, Evan was three times the ball handler that Scott was and everyone knew it. So it was all in fun, but it didn't feel like much fun to Evan. What's up, man? Paul asked. Evan dribbled the ball back and forth left hand, right hand, and then through his legs. Hey, I don't know, it's hot, he said. Well, yeah, it's hot for all of us, said Paul. Get your game on, dude. But Evan couldn't get his moves right. He was a half step behind himself, and every time he moved, the envelope slapped against his thigh, like a reprimand. Speaking of hot, said Ryan, everyone turned to look. Jack was coming up the path, running at a dead dog pace. Oh, please, said Paul, let her say yes. 
As soon as he was in range, Jack shouted, She said yes. What's up, asked Scott. Jack asked if his mom if we could all go swimming in his pool, Kevin said. Hey, Jack, shouted Scott, can I come too? Yeah, sure, said Jack, who had stopped running toward them and was waiting for them to join him on the path. Oh, great, thought Evan, but he wasn't about to turn down a dunk in a pool just because Scott Spencer would be there. Nobody wanted to go home for suits and towels. Kevin, Malik, and Ryan were wearing basketball shorts anyway, so they could swim in those. We've got enough suits at the house, said Jack. My mom saves all of our old ones. At the house, Evan changed into one of Jack's suits. He wrapped up his underwear and shirt inside his shorts and put the bundle of clothes on the end of Jack's bed next to all the other guys' piled up clothes. It felt good to drop the heavy shorts with the envelope stuffed in the pocket. Then, just to be sure, he put his shoes on top of his pile of clothes. He didn't want anything happening to that money. They played pool basketball all afternoon, even though the teams were uneven. Mrs. Begdazarian brought out drinks and cookies and chips and sliced up watermelon. Every time one of them went into the house to use the bathroom, she shouted, dry off before you come in, but she did it in a nice way. Then just when Evan thought the afternoon couldn't get any better, it did. Scott had gone into the house to go to the bathroom. A few minutes later, he came out dressed, his hair still dripping down his back. I gotta go, he said, jamming his foot into a sneaker. Did your mom call? Asked Ryan. Nope, I just gotta go, he said, see ya. And he ran out the gate. Great, shouted Evan, now the teams are even. And they went back to playing pool hoops. Evan didn't think about Scott Spencer for the rest of the afternoon. He didn't think about Scott Spencer until he went into Jack's bedroom to change back into his clothes and noticed that his shoes were on the floor and his shorts weren't folded up. And that is the end of chapter 13. One chapter left.